it. Let's pray fast. Father, I thank you that you're going to speak to us in whatever way possible. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so listen, how many know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask a question. This is a million-dollar question. Can you find for me dating in the Bible? Do it. If you can find dating in the Bible, I got some money for you. Anybody? All right. You found it? Uh-uh. You done made up something. You ain't found dating in the Bible. Uh, Boaz. They didn't date. That was, that was, who? The Q and, oh, Queen Esther. Okay. Well, we don't call that necessarily dating. We call that betrothed. Okay, <laughs> I don't necessarily, I wouldn't put that in the category of dating. That was like, this is who you're going to be with, all right? Yes, sir. So he's talking about being unequally yoked, and that's good. So that's covenant, which is where we will get to. And so all of these are great, but the process of dating you won't find in the Bible, right? Be so... And I'm setting that as groundwork so that we can understand that this is not so much about, man, what did God say about dating? But we can find scripture to help influence our mindset around dating. Okay, so that's what we want to do tonight. We, and, and I want to explore and expand. I know we have love without covenant, but let's go on a journey if you, if you don't mind. And let's just walk through this. Uh, but I want to recap a little bit. How many were here last week? Pastor Winfield killed it, right? So last week, if you weren't here last week, here are, some, here are some things that I pulled out that blessed me. Like he said, we are speaking spirits. Meaning God created us in his image and in his likeness. And when you research that, that really just means God created us to be fashioned like him, to shadow him, not so much in his appearance, but in what he does in his functionality. So God created us to speak like God spoke and created everything. He made us to do the same thing. He said, you cannot, this was, now this was the one that almost shut the class down. You cannot just be heard, you must be experienced. Woo! That was one of them say la moments. That was like, okay, let me say la just means think on this. It was like, okay, yeah. Like when people encounter you and they say, oh, I know you, you, you gotta bounce back with, no, you don't know me because you haven't experienced me. That's one of them like, oh, okay, step back. I feel you, I feel you. He said, building blocks, these are the building blocks of communication. The people, the message, the context, and effective listening. And it was so much that he said, but I wanted to just kind of recap so that we could marry what happened last week to this week. That, that speaking spirit thing is important because if I can expound on that, not only are we speaking spirits, but we're also triune spirits which mean we have a spirit, the breath of God, with the soul living in a body, three part. So when he created us, he gave us his spirit. He breathed in us, right? Then he gave us his soul, this, our, our psychology, our mind, how we think, our emotions, and he wrapped all of that up in this flesh. Why is that important? Because relationships take all three of those facets when you're entering into some type of covenant with somebody. They take the spirit part, attachment. You'll hear about that later. They take the soul, attraction. And then they take the body, intimacy. All right? So I want to recap with that. Let's go to the next, next slide. Um, me being from educational background, I always like to have a goal in front of me. So what is our goal? I know it's kind of hard to read, but the goal is to come away with biblically and spiritually influenced practices that are relevant and practical to managing healthy relationships before and after covenant or commitment. And then what are our objectives? Tonight, hopefully, we'll get through everything. If not, and we just get engrossed in conversation, I'm good with that. We are going to define relationships and love, and we're going to distinguish between what is healthy versus what is hazardous, okay? 
Those are objectives. Those are our goals. If you're online watching, we welcome you. Listen, we want you to be so engaged. Uh, our moderator talked about that QR code. We're going to kind of make this very, very interactive so that you can ask questions while we go along. If you have a question once we get to that period, you can come down front and ask that so we can engage. All right, you can go to the next slide. So defining relationships. According to Britannica Dictionary, a relationship is defined as the way two or more people or groups or entities talk to each other, interact, behave toward each other, or deal with each other. other in other words, it's connection. Okay? Relationship is about connection. If we break it down even further, we take the two words, relation, relation and ship, and let's break that up. So what is relations? The way in which two or more concepts or objects of people are connected, a thing's effect on our relevance to another. And a definition for ship is the state, condition, or quality. All right? So your relationship is centered about two things, how you connect and the quality of that connection. All right? Relationship, two things, how you connect and the quality or the condition of that connection. So oftentimes we deal a lot with how we connect, but we don't focus a lot on the condition or the quality of that connection. You might be in a relationship, but it might be toxic. You're just happy to be in a relationship. You're just happy to be connected. And you don't focus on, is there quality in this connection? What, what is the state of this connection? Or am I just connected to be connected sake? So, then we break it down into two categories. Interper interpersonal relationships and intrapersonal relationships. Okay? Interpersonal relationships, how I relate to people in my group, connecting me and you, our interpersonal relationship, and that intra, how I relate to myself. I would submit to you that the most important of those two relationships are intrapersonal. Why? Because it's very important how I relate to me before I'm able to relate to you. What do you say about yourself? What do you think about yourself? What are you saying to yourself? Could it be that your interpersonal relationships are janky because you have not learned how to have a good intrapersonal relationship? Could it be that what you are getting from other people is what you're reflecting on them because you haven't fixed what's in you so that you can work on what you're trying to bring to you? Oftentimes, you ever hear somebody say, oh, that person is cantankerous. Oh, they just don't get me. No, it's not they don't get you. You don't get you. So because you don't get you, you don't know how to articulate yourself to somebody else so that they, they can experience you. So if we're going to talk about relationships, we have to talk about not just my relationship with somebody else, but how I relate to myself. Can we go even deeper with that? Go to the next slide. I don't want us to even just think about duality, the relationships of platonic or romantic they expand, they expand so much further than that. So we have your relationship with your church, your friends, your relationship with your money, your career. Because I believe this, that the way you relate to one thing is in, indicates how you relate to something else. A problem that you could have over here could be solved if you learn how to fix this problem over here. Sometimes we separate them. Sometimes we say, oh, man, I'm doing great in my relationship on my job, but I suck in my relationship in my personal life. Well, why is that? Are you allowing something to happen over here that you haven't fixed over here? Have you not reviewed how you relate to this over here and then applied those same rules to what you're relating to over here? So relationships, if you take a broad step back and look at it and look at everything you relate to, how are they connected? What are the similarities? What are the flags? What are the things that say, you know what, man, I'm having this same problem. Could it be that you have a problem with discipline, which is the reason why you don't have no money? Which is the reason why you can't keep healthy relationships? 
because your lack of discipline in your intrapreneurs, intrapersonal relationship now causes you to relate to people with that same lack of discipline. Y'all know people that are never on time? I mean, I don't care what it is. It could be their funeral and they still going to wind up late. That could be a lack of discipline. So if, if they have no care of time, if they don't take care of that detail, then why do you think that they would reflect something different in your relationship? If I look at you and I walk into your house, which some of us have, and I see you don't wash your dishes, we're going to have a troubled friendship. <laughs> because it's not so much that you got to wash like me, but I'm looking at how you relate to the things around you. I'm looking at how you care for the things in your immediate space. I get in your car and I got to move all the stuff over and I got to fight the bugs because I'm sitting in their seat and you think I'm going to ride with you? We don't have a relationship because ships are moving. I can't go nowhere with you. This relationship is over <laughs> because relationships go somewhere. Right. And if I'm traveling with you in this relationship, I got to know that what I've hooked myself up to, I can walk with in agreement. I got to know that you care enough about yourself that when it comes to me, you're going to have my back. Because if you're not taking care of yourself, how can you take care of me? If you don't care what happens to your own body, why would you care what happens to me? Because relationships, again, are about what? Their connection. OK. So when I understand what connection is, I have to be careful what I connect myself to. Because when we get in this ship together, we're going somewhere and both of us have to agree on the direction. And so partly, sometimes when our relationships don't go the way that we want them to go, is you gotta check out whose ship are you in? Who you riding with? Do y'all have the same destination? Do y'all have the same goals? Let's go even deeper. So according to a 2024 article in Psychology Today magazine, there are 13 types of relationship one can have. Okay? You can go to the next slide. What are these relationships? Romantic, sexual, family relationships, friendship, online, acquaintances, work colleagues, location-based, teacher, student, therapist, client, professional, community faith-based, cultural group, and this one, which I don't get because I don't have no pet, a relationship with pet, which is a serious thing. Y'all, I know people, listen, sis, I'm sorry, sister, she got, listen, she, she was like, don't you talk about these pets, I, I get it. That's a serious thing. Like y'all and these pets. Y'all these dog funerals, y'all be serious spending money. Yeah, they spending money on them. Listen, but, but that shows you the power of connection. Look at that. That you can have all of these different types of relationship in different categories, relating to them in all different ways. And you're reducing yourself crying at night over one relationship. When you got options. Tell your name, I got options. Listen, I, 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 listen, leave me. I got options. Talk about me. I got options. Okay? So what I love about, what I love about um, how God created us, check this out. I was inspired by, by uh, Pastor Winfield last week, so I went and, went and did some studying. And when, when God says to Adam, okay, well, not even to Adam, when God says it's not good that man should be alone, I'm going to make for him to help me, right? So Adam is working in purpose. Everybody say purpose. Adam is busy in purpose. Check this out. Do you know that God created singleness before he created marriage? So for everybody that feels like you can't operate in your purpose because you're single, you better look at Adam. God put Adam in that garden. He said, Luke, name these, do this. Adam was about purpose. He was busy doing this thing. And then God says, you know what? It ain't good for Adam to be alone. I'm going to make for him a help me. Now, when we look at that word help me, we kind of think of something fragile. We think, okay, God is going to give Adam, you know, a little size, something to help him along the way. You know, no, no, no. 
When you study that in the Hebraic context from where it comes from, that word help me is really a military word. And it means that God, he brings somebody that's going to have active intervention on behalf of someone. Someone so committed that they would be willing to go to war for them. Listen, God says, I'm going to bring to Adam somebody that's going to be so in tune to where he is that they're going to be as fierce as he is about his purpose that they'll be willing to go to war on his behalf. You, Adam, you, Eve, God has aligned you with somebody that is so connected to where you're going that they're going to be willing to stand up against anything that comes against you. So why are you settling for somebody or something that's not willing to go to war on your behalf? That was the plan of God. It wasn't just a little help me. It was, I'm going to give you another warrior. Cyborg, women, he made you as warriors. That's why when he told the Satan, when he was passing out judgment, he told the serpent, you're going to bruise her heel, but she's going to bruise your head because I made her to be a warrior. That's why he gave her pain and he gave Adam work. He said, you're going to be, have pain in childbirth because I made you to be a warrior. So if you are settling for anything less than somebody that's going to go to war for you, you out of the will of God. Your connection, your godly relationship that leads to covenant is someone that is going to be activated so much into your purpose, so much into what you're doing. But check this out. She didn't find Adam doing nothing. She came to Adam while he was active. She came to Adam while he was in purpose. Adam wasn't the one looking around. Adam was busy doing what God told him to do. So sidebar, why are you standing still waiting for somebody to find you? Tell your neighbor, get in purpose. Because whoever is going to find you is going to find you working and operating in purpose. Whoever is going to connect to you needs to see where your ship is going. So when you get into relations with them, y'all can say, hey, we're going in the same place. We can do a relationship now because the way we connect, the quality of, con of our connection is based off of the purpose that we're both walking in. All right, so let's keep going. So in these relationships, let, go to the next slide for me. So 2023 data from Pew Research Center finds, check this out, y'all, that three in 10 Americans are single and about half, 51%, this was 5,000 people they surveyed, about half are open to either a committed relationship or casual dates. Over half of men, 56%, are looking for either a committed relationship or casual dates, and less than half of women, 44%, say the same thing. So gone is the misnomer that men don't want relationships, because it's y'all women, it's y'all the ones, y'all don't want it. What the brother said, brother say something. We, Okay, don't let that be an indication. They, 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 they write notes, okay? Don't, don't, don't let that be the indication. Yeah. <clears throat> so, according to Forbes, uh, where was it? The average age, no, according to Forbes, study nearly 45% of, the, of their 5,000 survey respondents reported online dating apps to be the place where they met people to date, making it the most popular spot. This is followed by 33% meeting through a friend, nearly 13, 32% at concerts or festivals, and 27% on social media. <laughs> now, what would have been the funniest if they put an average of how folks meet at church? We're going to do our own study about that, right? The average age of people getting married has increased as people are choosing to take that step later in life. The average age for a first marriage for men is 30, while women is 28 years old, okay? So stuff is changing. Relationships and how we relate to each other changing. Now, I'm going to throw you a curveball. Go to the next slide for me. NSA. I was going to ask you if you knew what NSA means. Anybody, anybody ever heard the term NSA? Anybody ever use the term NSA? Don't be shame. Don't be shame. What is it? No strings attached. Y'all know what that is? <laughs> See, this is the type of relationship that wasn't on the other slide. 
because this, this type of relationship was birthed out of our, our minds. It's like the Tower of Babel. We built this. this was, I don't think this, this wasn't in God's mind. This is something we got together and said, let's build. We're going to build an NSA relationship. No strings attached. A type of relationship that expects no emotional or covenant connection. This relationship type only demands the attributes of a traditional relationship type, but void of the emotional and psychological connection or commitment. No strings attached. It is my take on love without commitment, which could be viewed as an oxymoron. But it's something that we have allowed. Why? Because society has built this culture where we can have the semblance of something without the connection or the commitment. Now, you're shaking your head, but you do it every day. When you go on Facebook and you say yes to this friend, you have made a NSA relationship. Ain't no strings attached to that. But you get to say, I got 5,000 friends. And the Instagram took it a step further. Now, I got 10,000 followers. And now, subtly, we are made to think that these are real people in our life. We walk up to them and say, hey, I'm your Facebook friend, and act like they should know us. And some of y'all be like, wait, step back. Give me, give me two feet, personal space. COVID's still here. I don't know you. Why? Because we are conditioned now, and check how this is working in our psyche. We're conditioned to believe that there's a connection when we've done none of the work to establish it. I can click on a button and you become my friend. And the next day when you say or do something I don't like, I'll click on that same button and unfriend you. I am NSA. There is no strings attached to us. I compliment you on your birthday only because Facebook reminds me. I celebrate you when I want to. I talk about you when I want to. I do all of these things and see how that's getting into the DNA of how we relate to each other. That instead of doing the relationship, instead of focusing on the ship, the quality of what our connection is, my quality is only relegated to if you say something that I like and I agree with you. So that's Facebook, but look at your real life. Are we guilty of having NSA in personal relationships? Are we guilty of just settling just so that I can have somebody on my arm or in a picture? Because I need a like. Oh, y'all done got quiet in here. <laughs> okay, okay. Have I reduced or diminished who I am in my purpose? That God created somebody to stand next to me, to hold me up, and to be connected to me, and all I want is a picture frame? Am I that desperate for some type of relation that I don't care what kind of ship it come in? So, you can go to the next slide. So, what rich relationship category do you identify with? Are you in a serious relationship? Yo, we locked in for life. We locked. <laughs> Are you B, casual? Like, we might be heading down the aisle. I mean, if she act right, you look like, you, this brother look like, yeah, I just said, guilty as charged. It's okay, brother. This is a safe space. This is a product house and safe space. Are you C? Y'all ain't gonna admit it, but you in the NSA, because the NSA, I can't even remember their name right now. Like, <laughs> like when I get out of here, I will go through the phone, because y'all got, y'all know, in y'all phone, y'all be typing in like the words that you say to them to pill. Y'all know. Or you D, it's just me and Jesus right now. Like, listen. <laughs> <laughs> like, listen, I can't trust nobody. Everybody got flags. Jesus, only body that know he ain't never left me. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> listen, it's not good for you to be alone. It's not good for you to be alone. And I'm not promoting necessarily that everybody has to get married or anything like that. But I am promoting, and I love this, I love this track that we're doing.
because our goal is to identify how do we get godly influence advice in, lear in learning how to nurture and mature our relationships. How do I get out of this category of NSA or casual or it's just me? Because it's been me and Jesus for a while, and I love Jesus. But you know what? Listen, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, there's too many people on earth where it's just be me, me, me and you in this ship together. <laughs> Listen, you got to put somebody else in the ship, Jesus, because you be asleep. You be asleep, Jesus. There's a storm coming, like, <laughs> Lord, wake up. Right? All right, you can go to the next one. So listen, discussion, how well do you relate? I want you to take a minute to identify a connect point between you and someone in your immediate vicinity. Are y'all from the same city? Do you share the same birthday month? Do you have the same relationship status? Text, test your relating skills and see how many ways you all can be connected, okay? So right in your vicinity, it's, we're gonna take like 60 seconds, 62 seconds. If you're online, I want you to pick out somebody's name. Y'all start the conversation in line. Find out how many ways y'all, hey, y'all ain't said none of this brother. Somebody come, listen, and it, it doesn't have to be male or female. Like, all you're doing is relating. Where are you from? You know, what's your birthday month? How many ways are you connected? It's almost like six degrees of separation. How many ways are you connected? You got about 55 seconds. If you're online, blow up that chat in line, find one of them little screen names, ask them where you're from, you know, what's your birthday? What's your job? What's your mama name? Oh, my mama name the same thing. What's your last name? Where you, all of that. You got about 30 seconds. Ten, boom, boom, boom. Nine, boom, boom, boom. Eight. All right, perfect, perfect. All right, so I want a couple of volunteers and then I'm gonna stop for questions about this section when we talk about relationship. So I'm not gonna even ask the volunteer, I'm just gonna point you out. Brother, who were you, who, where were your connections at? Okay, how you how y'all how y'all related in any kind of way? Can we get blue mic on? Uh, relation where a couple of us are from different states other than Texas. Okay, so y'all transplants. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. 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 Let's come over here. What was what was the connection? Wait for the mic. We're both single parents. From the same city. From the same decade. From the same decade. So we share some things. Okay. Okay, see that? That was good. Okay, let's go back here. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 right here. You knew I was coming to you. You knew it. You knew it. You knew it. It's, it's just us riding with Jesus. Oh, y'all riding with Jesus. Okay, y'all got the same relationship status. They riding with Jesus. Let's come around here. Let's come. Well, you talked already, you know, you named the name, so we, we know how you related to everybody. <laughs> All right, let's get two more, let's see, because they still, let's come to these people that's still talking, they must have found a lot to relate to, right here. Y'all were still talking, game is, game is all over, and y'all still relating. Uh-uh, I'm gonna need to put somebody between y'all, come on, no. <laughs> how y'all, what's the relation, what's the connection? Um, we're both parents, um, well, we're two years apart. Um, my parents are from Dallas, he's, well, from Texas. He's from Texas. Um, oh, that's all right. All right. That's a lot. That's a lot. They took the assignment serious. Okay, we got people that raised their hand. Now, y'all got to walk over this way a little bit. I love it. They, listen, they got no pads. They took it out. No, listen, that's what you're supposed to do. Okay, what's the connection? Okay, so we're both single. We both go to Concord. Um, we both own our own homes. We're both realtors. Um, we work for the same um, brokerage. We're both in aerospace. So we aerospace? Are, yeah. Well, she was. She's a full-time realtor. I'm still in. I'm a part-time realtor. Still in aerospace. Mentor, mentee. Did y'all know each other before y'all got here? Yes. Oh, <laughs> I was about to say, like, this is. 
what a coincidence. Like, gee, you'll find that many people in aerospace. All right, listen, but y'all doing it. All right, sisters. Okay, we got one more. All right. Come on. So I'm Leisha, this is DJ. Um, we have both been in Germany. We are both um, prior military. Um, of course, both single. And we are both in entertainment. Okay, all right. This is beautiful. So now, that, why did I have us do this? Because if we don't work on what I talked about earlier, when we have a culture that's pushing us to be more disconnected, we have to work on how do we connect. I have been in church settings where people sit next to each other and never ask their name. Check this out. I'm from a generation where we were told not to get in the car with strangers. In this day and age, we call strangers to our house to pick us up. <laughs> I came from a generation where we didn't take food from strangers. This generation come up on my phone. I have an app where I ask strangers to bring me food that I've never seen in hopes that they didn't do nothing to it. We were scared when I grew up to even order room service. Now it's like, listen, whoever, if they got enough stars, because we will, we will connect with them stars now. You got to have enough stars. Anything under four, yeah, oh no, oh no. You gotta scroll. But look at how we've been reduced to relationships. Where I trust people who I don't even know, I trust their recommendation about you to come to my personal space and either take me somewhere or bring me something. So when we talk about relationships, I wanted to broaden the horizon to understand that our whole idea of relationship is being skewed by a society that's making us focus not on the quality of it, but how fast can we be connected? Nothing wrong with dating apps, nothing wrong with it, but it should not replace human connection. Because there's only some things, and Pastor Winfield told us this last week, there are only some things that you can get when you experience me. Okay? So, I'll stop right there. Any questions about this section? Any questions? If you have any questions, even online, there's a QR code. We're going to take Q questions. I want to make sure that we're intermingled with our questions. You can come to either, come to this side. Yes. Go ahead. So, I do have one from the QR code. It says, if I do not feel worthy of love, will God still bless me with a healthy connection or relationship? Oh, that's good. So it goes back to that intrapersonal. Listen to the question. If I don't feel worthy of love, my first question would be, who told you you weren't worthy? Who in your garden is lying to you? Eve was in a garden, and she allowed herself to take advice from a liar. And she made a decision that interrupted her whole life because she believed a lie. She allowed someone to convince her that the information that she received from her father was not real. And she acted on false information. So I pose that same question to whoever asked that and to us in the room. Whatever negative opinion you have of yourself is only the fruit from a tree that was meant to deceive you. Why would you listen to a liar and then use that lie and speak it over yourself because we're speaking spirits. The enemy does not have the power to create. You have the power. So he has to use your mind so that out of your mind you speak the abundance of your heart so that it's created in the earth. So if you're having feelings of unloved or worthlessness or diminishing your value, it's only because you allow your speaking spirit to regurgitate the thought that the enemy put in your mind. How do you stop that? Reject the thought. That ain't who I am. Hmm. And it's not connected to who's with me. Because in that same garden, remember, Adam was at work. So his worthiness and his ability to get love was not based off of anything. He was already in purpose when love came to him. So yes, does God have somebody designed for you? Absolutely. But unless you change the way you speak to yourself, 
you will repel anything that's coming your way. Because what they'll have to deal with is all the negativity that you've already spoken over yourself. And because you believe that if I say something positive to you, it will hit that negative wall and bounce back because you don't believe it. You don't believe yourself, so why would you believe something I would say to you? Now I have to fight against your self-image, which is just easier for me to walk away because now I got to make an intention to step in your ship, but your ship is rocky, so I step out. I hope that answered that. Yes. I think it did. So another question we have is, I am developed or successful in every area of my life, but I'm still desiring a relationship and to date at 40 plus. What advice would you give? Okay, so age ain't nothing but a number, y'all. Didn't I, did the slide I just told y'all folks is getting married later in life? Folks, my mama before, bless her heart, she's going on to be with Jesus. I miss her every day. She was a widow at 57 got remarried at 67. I said, Jesus, like, wait, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> like, you did it good for 30 years, took a little break, because daddy decided to go on to heaven, and then he said, didn't Jesus bring you somebody at 67? And he was there till you died, like, yeah. So age ain't nothing but a number, y'all. So don't let age be a factor in you thinking, where is love? That's a trick of the enemy. That's a, God does not, God is not moved by your age. And for some of us, it has taken that long, maybe longer, for you to divorce yourself from all the things that you already married yourself to. See, some of it is not that love hasn't come your way. You just, too, you married too many times. You married to self-doubt. You married to depression. You're married to anger. You're married to worthlessness. You're married to all these things. And so when a human comes to connect with you, they're looking at the trail of people you already married to and say, I don't want to help you commit adultery. Go on with them. <laughs> Your ship is full. Ain't no room for me. So you need to start, tell your neighbor, throw somebody off that ship. Those people who are not fiercely connected to you and going to stand with you and fight with you. Because remember, your help me is designed to be a warrior, not a wimp. Your help me is designed to be able to stand with you between every storm that you come up against. And if you're connected to somebody and you got to wake them up or you got to get them up or you got to fight by yourself, you got the wrong person in your ship. Stop diminishing your value because you just want to be related to somebody. Start caring about the quality of the ship. So I have one more from the QR code, yes. and it says, how do I build a kingdom relationship without compromising or sinning against God? Mm. How do I be in love and not have sex? That's all that question is. That's all. You, we be trying to say something real spiritual. How do I build kingdom without compromising myself? I love it. I love church. I love us. <laughs> how you not have sex? I get it. I get it. All right. So... To me, everything boils down to discipline. Even tithing, church going, all of that boils down. It's, it's, it's a couple of things. First of all, how do I relate to myself? What, is, what am I saying to myself? What are the principles and the discipline in my life? And as a man, what I say is, I don't want to sow in a garden that I'm not going to tend to. The sin is, for me, an and in Old Testament, we see this all the time. David, David and Bathsheba. Why did God get mad at David? The Bible says when the prophet comes to rebuke David, he says, listen, you could have had all these other people. God is mad at David. Why? Because he went into another man's garden that David had no intention of tilling the ground with. He just wanted to sow seed and walk out. So the sin is, why are you wasting what I gave you, but then why are you messing with a garden that you're not going to even tend to? So when you look at how do I develop a mature relationship, whatever side you're on, if you're the one that has the garden, you got to say, who am I going to let in my garden? Because listen, if you ain't going to stay around, uh-uh, take your seed somewhere else. I don't need no other plants in here because it may come up thorny. Uh-uh, go somewhere else. I don't know what you plant. 
And if you have the seed, you got to say, listen, I'm not going in this garden because, listen, if I got to stay around and make sure this garden, right, I want to make sure this is a garden that I want to live in. And then hold to that discipline. When we use the scripture, he will rebuke the devourer for your sake. We use it with tithing. We use it with giving, okay? That, that God will open up the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing, and you know, and, and all of that. The Lord gave me a revelation that really that's about law and discipline. Check this out. When you establish a law in your life, whatever it is, you have to have the discipline to carry out that law. That's what rebukes the devourer. All right. So, I want to lose weight. I established the law that I'm not going to eat after 9 p.m. I have the discipline to carry out that law. What happens? I reap the benefits of not eating after 9, being truthful to that, having the discipline, and I lose weight. I establish a law that I want to lose weight. Okay? I won't eat after 9. I break that law. And I eat 9, 30, 10 continuously. The devourer comes and now is able to eat up what would have been my fruit from discipline. Had I lived by the law that I established, I would have saw the benefits of that law. But the, the devourer was able to come in because I broke it with, un, with the lack of discipline. So in relationships... If you want to build kingdom healthy relationships, establish that law and have the discipline to carry out. I don't care what they come looking like. I don't care how much money they have. I got a law in my life because there's something I need to see. And if I allow you to break that, to break me down where I then break the law that I established, that I allow the enemy of compromise to come in and take everything that I would have had. Why is your heart broken? Because you allowed your law to be broken. Why you don't got no money? Because you allowed that law to be broken. You know you should be saving for a house, but you keep wanting to go to North Park. North Park is a very nice mall we have here in Dallas. <laughs> we can't keep you out of them stores. And then you come in church praying for a miracle in your finances when God is saying, if you just keep the law that you established, you won't have to pray for a miracle because I've already given you what you need. You keep breaking the law. So your heart keeps getting broken. You keep getting depressed. You keep having failed relationships. Because you go in there saying, uh-uh, I ain't going to do that this time. Uh-uh, I am closed for Christ. <laughs> I'm closed for Christ. I'm uh-uh, 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 And then you break that law. And you back with your girlfriends like, oh, I said I was closed for Christ. I thought they was the one. Okay. <laughs> All right. Do we have any more? We can keep going. Yes. Just one more. If he doesn't know God, is it worth taking the time to consider him? Ooh, if he doesn't. <laughs> this brother face is so funny. Like, man, we can't get a break. No. If he doesn't know God, is it worth taking the time to consider him. Whew. Man, so it's a couple of thoughts to that, and I won't live on that too long. But one thought, and we use this a lot, we talk about being unequally yoked, and, and my brother brought that up uh, uh, when I talked about dating, okay? So, again, there is the mindset. Now, this is the mindset I'm under, okay? So, so take it with a grain of salt. I believe that the God in me has so much power and influence that in any type of relationship I'm in, I will influence those that get on the ship with me. Now, when I showed you those levels of relationship, it is your decision what level of connection that you get with the person. If I find somebody and they don't know who Christ is, I don't have to necessarily put them in that relationship that causes for us to go into intimacy or ro romance or anything like that. We could be in a type of relationship where we're connected, where I can influence your thought and be a positive person in your life without having to think that it's going to be something else. 
I have to understand, that's why I started here, with what is relationships. Because if I only think of it in two terms, platonic or romantic, I will only look at you in a couple of different ways. But if I look at you in terms of how can we be related, how are we connected, that's why we did that exercise. Because when you open up and expand your horizons to say, my connections are not just me laying in the back in my bed, but my connections are more, my church group, my community, my all of this, that I can connect with you in a way that will influence you and not diminish me. So yes, if you meet somebody and they don't know God, do you run from them? No, because you should have enough God in you where, the, where, where your God at? Why your God so scary? I don't have to be scared of somebody that doesn't believe like I believe. Because I'm firm in my intrapersonal relationship. I know what I say to myself. So I won't be influ influenced by what you say. But you're definitely going to be influenced by me because greater is he that's in me than he that is in the... All right, that's not our class. That's not our class. But, you know, I thought that in. Was it it? All right, so let's keep going. So let's go to defining love. We had another question. Oh, come on. Yes. Y'all asking good stuff tonight, but ain't the brothers, y'all. Come on, brothers, don't leave me out. Now, y'all got to ask something. Come on. My brother right here, I look, you look like you got a question. Oh, God. I know. Listen, it was just on your face. It was on your face. I think, yeah. Go ahead, my sister. Okay, so since dating is not in the Bible, I'm wondering how do you determine how quickly or slowly to get married? Mmm. <laughs> how quickly. Is so, so, and some of this is further down the slide, too. But that's a great question. Um, you know, and, and again, I don't think... Now, what you will always get from me is honesty. There is never a quick answer to, to things like this, okay? There is, you know, for one person it might be this, for another person it might be that. I think when it comes to understanding when it's time to take that leap into covenant. So marriage is covenant. And covenant, as we'll, we'll talk about a little later down, covenant is different from just a mere relationship. Relationships are moving, but covenant is stationary. When God made covenant with us, God made covenant in, in terms of saying, listen, I don't care. He said with Noah, listen, I did that before. I'm making a covenant with you. I'll never destroy the earth. I don't care how bad y'all get. I'm not going to destroy the earth like that. That's how strong covenant is. When you get to that moment where you know marriage is the next step, that means I'm ready to step into the ship with somebody. I don't care how shaky it gets. I'm going to stand right here with you. So for everybody, that might be different. For some people, it might be after three months, six months. I think there are steps that you need to go through. I think there are different levels of relationship that you need to have. We're going to talk about it in a minute with love. There are different love iterations that you need to walk through before you get to that level where your spirit and somebody else's spirit connects and y'all are attached. But anything before that is almost like infatuation. And we're going to talk about that in a minute, okay? So, yeah, one more and I'm going to move on to love. Yes, sir. What did you think about a uh, relationship as far as, like, microwave? Because I think, you know, quick relationship. By being a microwave? I'm, I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> I, you, a quick, I mean, a microwave relationship? So, I mean, what's the, what's the question, though? So, when you meet somebody, you, you're not relating to them right away, right? So, mm -hmm. it, you, it's not instant. So it takes time to marinate, like cooking. You don't, you, whoever cook fast, I'm not eating your food because you're not taking time to pair it right. Preparation. Okay, I got you. So you're saying, I think it was probably more of a statement than a question, but I get you. In terms of when we, some relationships, we may do like a microwave where it might be too quick. Um, you know, and then some relations take, you know, like a slow burner. Come on, put it on there and just let it, you know, let it burn. And again, you know, I don't think it's a one answer. I think that everybody's life and where they are is different. Everybody's level of maturity is different. Some people walk into relationships and they understand what they want and they have that self-discipline. They say, listen, if it's not it, I'm not going to waste time. No, no, no. Okay, bye. We can be friends, but this other part of the ship is reserved for somebody else. Come on, access denied. Uh-uh, stay over there. Stay out in the lobby area because this inner quarters, uh-uh, you can only... So some people have that and some people, it takes them a little longer. They like to 
to, you know, dance around. They like to see, okay, what you look like with the hair off, put it back on, mm -mm, that won't work. All of that, it's okay. It's okay. That's the fun of relating. We have lost the art of learning how to relate. Taking the time to get to know someone because covenant should be forever. And the reason why we're breaking covenants is the same reason why we're lacking discipline in other areas. Because we've been taught by society that all you have to do is press a button and then get them out of your life. That's the society that we're not only raising our children in, but we're acquiescing to every day. That friendships are only a button away. So we have to rethink, and that's why we come to classes like this, so we can rethink how we're relating. All right, let's talk about love. Defining love. According to Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia Britannica, love is an emotion characterized by strong feelings of affection for another arising out of kinship, companionship, admiration, or benevolence. In re a related sense, love designates a benevolent concern for the good or welfare of others. The term is also used to refer to sexual attraction or erotic desire toward another. Love as an individual emotion has been studied in several scientific disciplines, including psychology, biology, and neuroscience, anthropology, and soci sociology. Um, in psychology, certain psychologists, such as Robert Sternberg, determined that there were three emotional components to love, also called the triangular theory. What are these three? Intimacy. Intimacy, which involves feelings of closeness, connectedness, and bondness. Passion, which involves feelings and desires that lead to physical attraction, romance, and decision commitment, which involves feelings that lead a person to remain with someone and move toward shared goals. All right, so remember I told us in the beginning, there's something to these threes, right? So we have, in psychology, they've determined that love, from a psychological standpoint, is based around these three things. Intimacy, passion, decision and commitment. Intimacy, flesh. Passion, the soul, the emotions. De decision, commitment, the spirit. So when we talk about love from a psychological standpoint, these iterations are almost like levels. Intimacy is not just the act or act. Intimacy is this first, almost the connection from body to body. It is the touch. It is, you know, when y'all first get together, y'all can't ride in the car without holding each other's hand, and hand is cramping and stuff, and you want to let go, but, you know, now I'm going to hold on. It's been three days. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. <laughs> Ooh, my hand hurt. Oh, hold on. Okay, that's intimacy, right? That's that first level, okay? Don't get called away with intimacy. Because listen, when that hand cramp, you're going to let go. And if you base the relationship solely from an intimate standpoint, you're setting yourself up to only be connected from what you can see. It's a flesh thing. Then there's passion. It's passion. Passion is that soul thing that, you know, when you're at work and you can't even type because you're thinking, what they doing? What they doing? What they got on? What they, you know. Passion is not just the act, sexual act. Passion is that thing that makes your soul yearn and long to be in the presence of somebody. Passion can be confusing because passion is connected to your emotions. And tell your neighbor, emotions lie. Woo, tell them again. They ain't hear you. Tell them emotions lie. Say it louder. Tell them emotions. These emotions be lying. Why? Because your emotions are connected to how you think about things, how you dissect things, how you take things in and regurgitate it. 
Because sometimes that passion can be so strong in both ends of the corner. You ever woke up and like, man, I feel good. Whoo, I love you today. Oh, I love you. Because I'm saying love you out of passion. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Look what you did. And then they make you mad. Oh, I can't stand you. Get on my face. Okay? Because passion changes based off of how you feel. So if you get into covenant based off of passion, you'll jump out of covenant when that passion changes. Now, there's another category, decision and commitment. When you get to this level of love, you make a decision to love. To me, that's the strongest level that you want to be at in your relationship when you're considering marriage. I want somebody that made a decision and a commitment to love me, not based off the intimacy, not based off the passion or the lack thereof, but because you made a decision to walk with me and to relate with me in a way that no matter what comes up in our lives, we are together. Right now, there's also a biological standpoint. If we keep going, not only from a psychological standpoint, but some many biochemists consider love to be a biological process. Positive socializing triggers cognitive and physiological processes that create desirable or beneficial emotions and neurological states. A relationship provides constant triggering of sensory and cognitive systems that prompt the body to seek love and to respond positively to interaction with loved ones and negatively to their absence. Recent biological theories of love pioneered in revolutionary research by the American anthropologist Helen Fisher broke down love into three biological processes, okay? Lust. Somebody said, well, <laughs> this is the biological thing, lust. Lust is driven by the desire for sexual gratification. The evolutionary basis for this stems from our need to reproduce. Number two, attraction. Attraction involves the brain's pathways that control the reward behavior. Dopamine is a particular well-publicized player in the brain's reward pathway. It's released when we do things that feel good to us. And then lastly, it's attachment. While lust and attraction are pretty much exclusive to romantic entanglements, attachment mediates friendships, parent bonding, social, they're all, the attachment is that last level. Okay, so we got lust, flesh, attraction, emotion, soul, and attachment. So in both science, and I love to bring up science with spiritualness because we see, I started with, you were created as a soul, as a spirit with a soul and a body. So even science and biology says that when we talk about love, love comes into these three categories, love, in a biological standpoint, starts with lust, attraction, and then attachment. So you see all of these come from the same heading of love, but in different iterations. And the danger as we are dating or as we're getting to know somebody is when you stop at one level without reaching the final level. If I base how I interact with you off of just lust, I'm coming up short because I'll never get to attachment because I could get stuck at lust. If I just live in attraction and I never make it to attachment, I'll get stuck because if I just stay with you because I'm attracted to you, what happens when your appearance changes? So many of us some of us, I won't say many of us, some of us only relate to people that we're attracted to. Y'all looking at me like, that ain't me. Yes, it is. Stop lying. That's why you're on them dating apps. You ain't reading the description. You're looking at them pictures. Nope, nope, nope. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Mm -hmm. And then if they got more than one picture, like, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, y'all know what you Because we initially... Look at physical appearance. And I'm, ain't nothing wrong with that. The problem is, if that is the basis of how you're establishing this relationship, 
and you don't seek to do anything deeper or stronger than that, all of our appearances will change. Every single one. Now, some of y'all change y'all appearances faster than other people. That's your prerogative. Do what you want to do. But some of us, life for all of us will change our appearance. And if your attraction to me or if your love for me is only based off of your attraction for me, then it's not deep enough for me. You ought to get that established in your life. If you're not trying to walk this thing out through these stages, now you don't jump to attachment. That's scary. That's what we call a red flag. If you meet somebody and say, ooh, I can't live without you, back up. <laughs> hey, <laughs> change that number. I'm a witness, I didn't had it before. Change that number, change churches, leave Concord, come to Potter's house. I'm just saying, don't judge me. I'm just saying, I'm always riding for my church. I'm always riding. Because I'm scared of anybody that wants to skip steps. All the steps are needed. I didn't say attraction was bad. I want you to be attractive. You know, give me something to look forward to when I see you. Because if I got to like find like, ooh, ooh, uh, ooh. I'm going back to Jesus. It's just go, I'm going back to that category. I'm going back to, it's gonna be, it's me and G Jesus, here I am again. She tripping, she tripping. She wouldn't get that breath together, so I'm back with you again. Because I don't have to work. <laughs> Okay, so I want somebody who's willing that when you get in this relationship with me, that A, we stand together, and that we're going to ride through these different stages together, and that we're going to take our time through each one, so that I can learn who you are, I can experience you in each stage. So that when I get to that covenant stage, when I get to that attachment stage, when I get to that decision commitment stage, that I am making a decision out of sound mind that this is who I know and this is who I want to be with. Does that make sense? All right, can we go a little deeper? We got a little more time. Uh, I won't get to this last thing. All right, so real fast, you can go to the next one. So we, we you hear a lot of times about Greek influences, we use these Greek words, and some of these you've seen before, but I just want to give them to you. So when we talk about love, again, love is in all of these different categories. We have all these different understandings. Love is so vast. When you say you love me, you almost should say, well, how you love me? Like, which love? Like, yeah, I hear that. Because some of us, some of us, you know, some of us either we are the ones or we're the recipient of that if after a week, you say, oh, I love you. Wait, 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 wait. Hold down, hold it, hold it. <laughs> you lust me. You don't love me. You lust me. And I don't want you to mistake the word. Because if you don't understand how to use the word, see again, if what you say to me seeps in me, I might believe that. And I might start to mistake your lust for love so that when that changes, I get confused. Like, wait a minute, I thought you loved me. No, I was just lusting for you, but somebody came along that I lust for more. Now, you didn't fell in love with somebody that was lusting for you, and then you gave up something to get that lust, more lust, and now they moved on to lust for somebody else. And here you are with a broken heart. And it ain't really broken. It's not really love because it was false attachment. It started with a lie, and so that lie just bred itself more. All right, so eros, physical love or sexual desire. Philia, affectionate love, love between friends, storage, familiar love, family love, mania, obsessive love. Y'all stay away from that mania love, okay? Listen, stay away from it. It's a real thing. Ludus, Latin for playful, courtship, casual love, pragma, practical love, based on duty, obligation. Fellatio, self-love, and agape. Now, why do we, how many, if you're in church for any amount of days, you've heard of agape love, right? And we equate agape love a lot of times to God's love. Why? Because agape love is that strong love that's unconditional, sacrificial love. Can we have agape for each other? Absolutely. 
Can I have unconditional and sacrificial love for my brother and my sister? Absolutely. But if I get into a relationship, I want to know which category of love are we walking in. Okay? Uh, I'm going to... We're going to take a couple of more questions, and then I'm going to see how far I can get with this healthy versus hazardous. So any questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Sister Jasmine? We so you're saying that you have to go through all the stages now. Does it definitely have to be in a certain order at all times, or can it be? So I think it does need to be in order, right? Because, and not so much, and there's so many studies about, you know, so there, you know, the triangular theory, and then there are seven series of love, and, and whatever. But I do think that there's an order or progression to how relationships build and grow, okay? That in the beginning when I relate to you, I have to have this general connection, that there has to be a foundation, that, and I allow myself, so if you're on this side of it, allow yourself patience to walk through each stage. Don't rush because of age or time or whatever. Don't diminish your value or diminish what you should have because you're rushing to something that you see somebody else have. Which is sometimes a lot of the problem because we're comparing our relationship to somebody else's ship. Oh, look at that. They rolling. No, 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 no. And you don't know. It's so corroded under the bottom of there. They don't like nobody. They just doing it for the picture. Okay? They're doing it for the gram. But take my advice is for all of us, take the steps. I want to know that in every season that we've been able to walk through this stage and be successful with it, and then we've been able to connect from a soulish stage where our emotions, and I get to see multiple sides of your emotion, and then when I get to that spiritual stage where I know my spirit connects with your spirit, I'm ready to take the leap. But if I miss a stage, I might misname something for something that looks like. That's why I went through those levels of love, because it's all the same word with different iterations. It all looks the same, but it has different things under it. And I want to see you in all, as many levels as possible. Make sense, my sister? Awesome. Yes, ma'am. Hey, quick question. So when you were talking about the lust phase, like, and you were making an example when you initially connect with someone, is it really lust if you just like, like their vibe, their energy, you flow together? You're not necessarily physically lusting after them, but you do love their presence. So that's a, that's a great, I'm glad you said that. So yes, because again, just like with love, we denote and relegate certain actions to words. But it, couldn't, it doesn't mean that lust is not the totality of that extreme. Lust or attraction or, or, or passion, is passion is the same thing. Passion doesn't mean, oh, all of this. Passion could be the subtle things. Lust could be the subtle things. Lust could be the thought of, oh, I like that. Hmm, okay. Even the Bible talks about lust. If you lust in your heart, you've already done it. I said, Lord, you're making it hard for a brother, okay? But you know, listen, but, but again, it, it's not so much, we don't have to think of extremes. Lust in its very virgin form could be something that's just a simple something. Hmm, okay, I'm lusting for key lime pie. I can't have it because I got to go. But you know, it's a subtle thing, okay? And yes, yes, ma'am. Uh-uh, you look like you're going to ask something hard. Uh-uh. <laughs> How do you navigate dating in a world where society is really doing its own thing? So you seem like you're doing too much when you say, I'm dating with the purpose of marriage in mind in the end. And um, also. Also, I see, I told y'all also. <laughs> see that? She can't get me. Let, me. let me do the first question. And, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Let me do the first one. So, again, it goes back to what did you establish in your life? What is the law that you establish in your life? Now, I'm not saying this to you, but I'm going to use this as an example. I do think that when you are entering relationship with someone in whatever manner, that you have to be careful about what you communicate. 
because I want to give you enough, but I don't want to give you too much. That I know what my desire is, and I have the law that's in my life, but I'm just meeting you. And so I'm a look, not me, if, if, we, if, we, if we go out to, to Waffle House, because that's where we're going, don't expect nothing, listen. <laughs> Waffle House or Luby's, don't hate. Luby's got that, my brother like, yeah, Luby got that little buffet line, I'll be like, pick out what you want. Right. Uh-uh, not that, get the special, get the special. Mm -mm. <laughs> You're being fancy, this is just the first day, get that special. But... But I am always, me personally, I am always a little cautious of somebody that shares too much of their life. If I walk away from that first time and I know everything about you, your social security number, where you on, I'm like, woo, what can I trust you with? You a leaky ship. You got too much leaking out of you. I got too many holes to fill if I get with you. So I may have the tendency to walk away. Now, I'm not telling you to be dishonest. I'm telling you that to be careful about what you share so that your spirit of discernment can see who you're dealing with. Because it might be the other way around. You might share somebody and you don't know that they're crazy. Now, you didn't give them access. You gave access to a crazy person and now you can't get rid of them. And you're wondering why. Well, you told them where you lived. So you have to... You have, that's why I said the stages. You have to start, what kind of, let's, let, let's start at the ground level of this ship. I want to build quality. And I want to understand, like the exercise we did, well, how do we relate? Where are you from? You know, okay, let's, let's start here. Let's see if there are levels that we can relate to, that we can have a conversation where we're, it's not like pulling teeth when we're on the phone because we don't know what to talk about. Okay? Now, what was part two? <laughs> So kind of backtracking, I guess, um, when it comes to even getting to the point of meeting someone, when it comes to, look, I didn't lost my train of thought. That's oh, all yeah, right. Oh. And getting stuck between should you put yourself out there or should you be busy at work and just trust that God is going to bring those right relationships to you? Mm. Should you, okay, the sister say that's good, that's good. Should you, <laughs> Y'all remind me of that little meme of where the women are sitting around the table, like they say something, like, mm, that's good, mm, that's good. <laughs> I love y'all. Um, you know what, I, I think, again, it is the maturity of knowing, first of all, it's not being afraid to present yourself and know what you want, okay? One, there's nothing wrong with that. You said, should you be busy working or outside doing. I always think that purpose should come first. That purpose, if you are afraid to walk in purpose because you think you might miss what God has for you, then you don't know who God is. Whatever God is gonna bring your way is always gonna be more beneficial when you're in purpose. Because check this out, purpose is where you will find what God has for you. If I stop before I get purpose because I'm looking around, I'm going to miss what God put in my way if I kept walking to purpose. Then comes trust. Because a lot of times I see it, it feels like we don't, in personal testimony, I was always afraid of God, who God was going to put me with, right? I was like, God, because, you know, you know, <laughs> I like a certain type of woman. And like, you know, God, some of these church women, you know, like, like, you know, she gonna have long skirts and, you know, she gonna have bad knees and she, you know, she like, God, no, I don't want to trust you. Like, who I trust you with everything. I trust you with me getting on a plane. I trust you, but that marriage thing, like, no, God, let me handle it. And I had to understand, like, who you talking to? Like, this is who created you. It is our fear that God is going to align us with someone who's not going to meet us in those categories that we've created. And we have to let go of the fear that God doesn't know what we need. And then trust that as I am doing your will, as I am Adam, as I am walking around doing what you told me to do, that God, you're going to say, you know what, it's not good that you should be alone. I'm going to bring you a warrior who's going to stand with you 
and fight with you and lay down their life for you if they have to because they're that connected to you. All you have to do is be about my business. We got, we got to get this, bro. We got one. Listen, you got to stand up, brother, because this is the only brother to ask a question. I couldn't even use my brother in the middle. I, you, <laughs> you got a quick. We're getting to you. Yes. All right, I'll be quick. Um, how do you deal with, like, okay, so on one hand, nobody's perfect. But then on the other hand, you don't want to sell yourself short. So how do you deal with the fact of, like, am I being picky or should I wait? Like, you know what I'm saying? You might have two out of the three. Like, I got two loves with one person, but I don't have the third one. Or I got one of them, but I don't have the other two. How do you deal with, like, the dichotomy of, like, that situation? See, look at it, the, the dichotomy. Come on, brother. That's what I'm talking about. Since you better get you a man that know how to say dichotomy. You want to ask him to spell it. We ain't going that far. It's the first level. The second level, spelling the second level, okay? But no, that's a really good question. How do you deal with, and so we meet a lot of people, right? We might, oh man, you, you check Mark, do you check these boxes, but oh my goodness, you don't got no job. Oh God, if you just had a job, I could love you. Okay, okay, I'll take you broke, okay? And then get frustrated. So, so I say this, I say this. It, that establishing that law, and we're out of time. That man, that is, come to the center real fast, brother. I want to get your question. That establishing that law and understanding number one, I know my faults. I'm something to deal with, right? And so, a lot of times, we this is that interpersonal, intrapersonal. A lot of times, we, re, we reflect on the people, our deficiencies, and we want them to come to the table a full plate when we just bring in chicken. Because we always see ourselves better than we see other people. So, yeah, uh, ain't nothing wrong with me. Ooh, she cantankerous. No, you are. She's just reflecting back to you what you already are. And so when I come to a relationship, I come understanding that I'm half full. I come understanding that I have my faults, my frailties, my deficiencies too. And I come understanding that whoever gets with me is going to have to deal with my idiosyncrasies, my snore tonight, whatever it is. So I'm going to have to put up with something. You're not, I'm not going to check mark everybody's box. But I have to understand what is it that I desire? Where is it that I'm going? What, it, what am I purpose to do? To my sister right there. That's why when you're operating in purpose, you have a better sense of what you want to be connected to. If I'm building a business, I want to be connected to someone that can help me and stand with me. So I know that when I get into this relationship, I already know, listen, these are some of my, I, th this box, you got to check. Everything else we can work with. And then open and honest communication like we learned last week. Okay, last one, and then I got to close out. Uh, so I just wanted to ask, like, um, can you explain a little bit more about, like, the intra intrapersonal relationships you were speaking of? Yeah. You know, just, like, you know, give us some, I don't know, different points on that. Different yeah, notes. intrapersonal relationship. What are you saying about yourself? What are you saying to yourself? What are you believing about yourself? All of this starts with your, comp with your relationship to you. You can never fully relate to someone else if you have not learned how to relate to yourself. If you don't know what you like, how can you have someone fulfill for you? Because you don't know what to tell them. You don't know what to articulate. And this is not just about what you want to eat. But what are your dreams? What are your aspirations? What are your goals? If you come to the table with, I don't know, then what do you expect that help me to help you fight with? So many times we have not sat with ourselves to talk and relate to ourselves, to be confident in ourselves because we feel like being single is a disease. And we're just trying to get medicine to fix the disease instead of saying, you know what, I'm okay. I'm going to walk in and operate in purpose, and I'm going to change what I say about myself so I don't believe a serpent trying to get me to eat a fruit that I know I shouldn't. That I won't be moved by what looks good and what sounds good. That I won't be moved by lust and by passion. I say, oh, it's got to be more than that. I can get that anywhere. That I am so content and understanding of where my goals are and what I am doing that if you're talking all this noise, I can't even hear you. You can be a friend. You just can't be in a certain part of the ship. So intrapersonal relationship.
It's really the first level of understanding who you are, understanding who God created you to be, understanding, God, what did you call me to do? What is my purpose for being here on earth? And then I pray, Father, now that I have that, connect me to the warrior that you have that's going to stand and fight with me. Because he or she, whoever you are, has that same mitigated goal. They understand it. They've had that same conversation with you. And we will align together because you're a God of intention and you're an orchestrator. So I don't have to worry about missing you because you've already scored our lives to meet at the measure where you want us to be. And the music that we will play together, my God, today. Never let us come together as a body of believers and not be intentional about connecting. Father, we thank you. We love you. We honor you. We appreciate you. We thank you for this house, this house called the Potter's House. We thank you for the vision, Father God, for us to grow and evolve as people of faith, God, understanding not just spiritual things, but things that affect our lives day to day. So I pray for every soul in here, God, that something, a seed that was dropped gets into the soil of their heart, Father, and germinates into the ground of their heart, Father and grows up and blesses them, Father. Let someone else come along and water it, Father, so that they can see the results of coming to class, God, and learning and being their word. I thank you for purpose that surrounds us, favor that follows us, blessings that will fall on us daily. And as we leave this place, but never from your presence, go before us, keep us safe until we meet again in Jesus' name. We love you and we love each other. Amen.